Well, welcome and thank you for joining us today. I'm Lisa Daniels, the managing partner of KPMG. And it's my great honor to introduce our next speaker. Attorney General Rob Bonta is truly a role model for the American dream. An immigrant from the Philippines, Attorney General Bonta grew up in the Central Valley, the son of farm workers and civil rights activists who instilled in him a deep passion and calling for social, racial and economic justice. His early experience inspired him to pursue a career in public service as a deputy city attorney in San Francisco, a member of the Alameda City Council, and later as the first Filipino American elected to the California Assembly. In the Assembly, Attorney General Bonta continued to advance the causes of justice and equality, authoring a range of legislation on immigration, housing, and health care. With his appointment to Attorney General by Governor, Governor Newsom in March, making him the first Filipino American to hold the post, he continues the work his parents inspired him to follow all those years ago. This afternoon, we look forward to hearing about his priorities, his views on the relationship between the Attorney General's office and the business community. To lead the conversation with Attorney General Bancha, it is my great pleasure to introduce Christina Lawson, the managing partner at renowned law firm Hanson Bridget. Please join me in welcoming Christina Lawson and Attorney General Bonta. Thank you, Lisa, and welcome Attorney General Bonta. It's an honor to speak with you today. We're gonna jump right in because I know our time is short. California takes immense pride in its role as a global innovation leader. And of course, innovation is by definition you know, meaning disrupting or pushing established boundaries to solve problems and create new economic opportunities. Through that lens, how do you view the role of the Attorney General in continuing to make California a place where innovators, entrepreneurs, and investors want to do business? Do you take a light touch or a heavy touch? Let me first of all say uh, thank you for the opportunity to be with you. Thanks to the Bay Area Council, Jim Wonderman and Lisa and Christina for uh, your friendship and partnership. I'm thankful for the opportunity to be here with you today. And I know that we've gone through a, a, a tough year and as we emerge and uh, see the bright lights ahead and California's economy comes roaring back, I, I hope that everyone is healthy, safe and well. And um, thank you for the question. You know, the, the, the thing that makes California great is that we, one of the many things is that we are a state of, of doers and, and dreamers, of, of innovators, um, of builders, and uh, we need to continue to support and nurture that spirit. Um, it, it's led us to be the fifth largest economy in the world. It's led us to uh, be the, the nation leader in so many sectors from agriculture to uh, to tech, to, to film and, and beyond. And uh, it's that spirit uh, that, that needs to uh, continue to be fostered. And of, of course, when you have innovation and, and you're doing things in a new way, you are disrupting, but you know, by, by definition. And so, um, uh, you know, we need to be supportive of, of, of the innovation and, and of our business community. We, you know, I want, we want our businesses that, that have helped create great jobs and, and, and helped uh, drive our economy forward to stay in California. That's where they belong. And, um, and it's important to, to, to name that. And, and also we, we, at the same time, we also need to make sure that the laws that have been put in place by uh, the legislature um, are deserving of, of, of appropriate enforcement, not in a way that's uh, gotcha or, um, or, or anything else. Uh, it, it's important to have compliance uh, when it comes to issues like like privacy or or, or antitrust or anti-competitive uh, activity, and if if those issues can get addressed in the boardroom, then that's better than uh, taking them to the courtroom. And so, um, my view is is for a, a thriving business community throughout California, for for businesses to uh, that have started in California to stay in California, for people with dreams of creating new businesses uh, to build that dream here and cultivate it and foster it right here in California, uh, where so many uh, dreams have, have uh, become a reality. And uh, as we do so to make sure that um, our businesses and, and all people of California are living in a, in a, in a center, 
uh, Jetic uh, ecosystem where uh, you know our consumers and families and Californians thrive as our businesses do as well. So um, I don't know if that means light touch or 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 or, or heavy touch. If you know if there's um, a, a clear and egregious violation of the law, then uh, we would step in to make sure that there's compliance with the law. And again, if we can solve that uh, short of the courtroom, that's better. If we need to go to the courtroom, we will. Um, uh, but I, I think the idea is to 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 get. Uh, everyone in compliance with the laws and the rules while we thrive. Um, and, you know, our workforce is, is, is obviously it's so important to make sure that we take care of working people. Um, you know, our, our human capital is what, make, what makes California great, including our workers and taking care of them in safe and fair working conditions. And, you know, with health care, um, uh, with retirement security, um, you know, with, with good wages to support their families, um, you know, we can all succeed together, our businesses and our people all at the same time. Thank you. Uh, to change the topic a little bit, of course, racial and social justice issues have been profoundly important to you and have been really a North Star in your career trajectory. How do you view racial and social justice as they relate to California's housing affordability and also the homelessness crisis? And do you see a role for your office in addressing these crises and, and what might that look like? I do, and, and let me just step back and say, as um, uh, some of you may know, I, I was a California State Assembly member for almost a decade, and, and then recently uh, uh, had the honor and privilege of a lifetime being appointed California Attorney General. And in the California State Legislature, I was proud to work on a, a broad array of issues, certainly including housing, homeless, addressing housing, affordability, homelessness, uh, tenant protection, housing production and the three Ps, uh, preservation, protection, and production. And uh, the Attorney General's office is involved in every issue that the legislature is involved in. We, you know, our, my job is to enforce and implement the laws of, of the state of California. And um, you know, every, I think it's so important to always see our state, our, our world, our challenges, our problems through that equity lens and to recognize that there are, are people who are, are more, more vulnerable than others, who are more disadvantaged. And my, I see the, the role of the attorney general as being the people's attorney, standing up for everyday people, especially the vulnerable, the voiceless, the hurt, the harm, the abused, the cast aside, the forgotten, the mistreated, and make sure that they're being treated fairly, that the, that the scales of justice are balanced and you know, making sure that we're protecting the little guy from any abuse of power or overreach of authority uh, by the big guy. And so always making sure that uh, we see our, our, our state and our world through that, that social justice and that equity lens, uh, making sure that we, we see the most vulnerable when it comes to housing. You know, I, I believe that no one should ever be evicted into homelessness, you know, period, um, you know, full stop, that we need to protect um, uh, those who are teetering on the edge and uh, you know who 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 could fall over those who've been hanging on by a thread and 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 can't hold on any longer. We always need to see them and value them and provide the support uh, that's necessary. And you know we also need to recognize our history in, in the state and this nation of uh, racially discriminatory um, practices when it comes to housing, whether it be redlining or whether it be um, you know re restrictive covenants. Um, that, you know, some right in the Bay Area, the very progressive Bay Area that have said, you know, you know if you're of a certain race, you can't own a home in a certain neighborhood or the, the, the building uh, of freeways and other projects that have decimated entire neighborhoods and communities. Uh, you know, that, that's our history. That's the, a context to, to see our, our, um, our future and to envision a future that is infused and animated by uh, racial equity and social justice and to, to always uplift um, the communities that are most vulnerable. So, you know, m my job would be to, to is to protect uh, and defend the laws to make sure, for example, that uh, everyone uh, throughout our state is doing its part to produce housing. We, we, we have a major supply shortage when it comes to housing. We need um, millions more units. Um, the, uh, you know, people need to comply with uh, with their with their regional allocation uh, numbers and 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 identify places to to build and and uh, put aside this uh, you know the NIMBY mentality where it exists and contribute to a, uh, a a common future where we have enough housing in the state of California and where we all have shared responsibility. No city and no no jurisdiction needs to do everything, but everybody needs to do something. And uh, we also need to protect our tenants and make sure that the tenant protection laws that are there. Um, are, are enforced, that they're not flouted, 
uh, or, or violated. Um, and, uh, you know, th those are some of the, the ways that the Attorney General would get involved in enforcing and implementing the laws uh, that we have in the state of California that lead us towards the building of, of more housing, that uh, lead us to the protection of tenants where appropriate, and, and that also uh, end some of the uh, vestiges of our um, of, of the discriminatory past when it comes to housing and, and have a, a, a housing for all approach where uh, it's more just and more fair and free of any discrimination. Thank you. Um, along those same lines, I, some of your predecessors did take an active role um, in, you know, as attorney general in um, addressing these crises. Do you expect your office to take an active or even proactive role on these issues? Yes, uh, I do. I, I, active and proactive. You know, we we have um, uh, we definitely we represent the, the the state as our client and the different agencies, including the governor. Um, we've definitely seen activity in um, going to court to uh, make sure that local jurisdictions are doing their part when it comes to uh, providing sufficient housing supply uh, as part of their shared responsibility and and, and their fair share. We will also be active to the extent that, that tenants are being hurt and not treated fairly. So, uh, you know, I, I think housing and homelessness, we have so many, unfortunately, so many crises right now from an international pandemic that we're emerging from and an economic recession that we're emerging from. We've, uh, you know, we're in a racial, in a racial justice reckoning, a climate crisis, but certainly a housing and homelessness, uh, housing affordability and homelessness crisis. So um, uh, we will be involved in addressing all of the above, including housing affordability and homelessness. Thank you. And you, of course, mentioned the COVID-19 pandemic, um, which has been just a, you know, caused a historically unprecedented series of events over the past uh, year uh, or so. Could you talk to us a little bit about how you're approaching equity in healthcare? Because of course the past 15 months have exposed profound inequities across California with respect to healthcare access, care and services. Absolutely. The when it comes to healthcare, I, you know, I believe that uh, healthcare is is a right, not a privilege. It's for all, not the few. It's fundamental, and everyone needs it. Everyone deserves it. I'm a big supporter of the Affordable Care Act and um, the the healthcare exchange covered California and the state of California. The Medi-Cal expansion, the um, protections for those with pre-existing conditions um, and for older uh, adult children to be able to have access to the Affordable Care Act. Our our office, the Department of Justice, was the lead in defending the Affordable Care Act and the most recent attack. And just last week, as you know, the US Supreme Court decision came down uh, upholding the Affordable Care Act for uh, the third time with um, the result being millions of Americans having access to uh, uh, affordable health care, high quality health care and accessible health care. And um, you know, it's, it's really important that we always, again, have that equity lens when we, when we look at health care. Um, COVID-19, Someone told me COVID-19 revealed more than it cost and, uh, you know, sort of revealed and laid bare pre-existing inequities and, and exacerbated them and worsened them. And we saw um, communities that had uh, le less access to, to health care, less access to things like, um, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, safety equipment um, who who didn't have the, uh, uh, the ability to isolate uh, and, and were in multi-generational households, multi-generational households where they were um, um, making it with, if, with one uh, person or more being a frontline essential worker, which really put folks at risk. And those are communities that we need to see and support first. Um, you know, th those are the communities that get hurt first and worse in, in, a, in a pandemic. Uh, like COVID-19. So it, it's really important that we um, always use that equity lens when it comes to healthcare. Healthcare is very important to me. My, my father set up healthcare clinics for farm workers when he worked for the United Farm Workers of America, um, a very uh, important and essential uh, a group of workers that were also vulnerable and, and were deserving of the dignity and the support of healthcare. My first job was the Alameda Healthcare District, as was stated earlier, providing quality health care in, in the East Bay. And I was the chair of the Assembly Health Committee and on the health committee my entire time in the, in the legislature for nine years. And so uh, health care is fundamental, and we always need to make sure we're looking through that equity lens and providing health care to our most vulnerable first. Thank you. And I know uh, we're limited for time, and so I have one more topic that I'd like to ask you a question about. 
Of course, the events of the past year have shined an intense spotlight on the role and conduct of law enforcement and have sparked much debate about things like defunding the police. While crime overall, particularly violent crime, is down by historic measures, many cities have seen significant surges in other types of crime, crimes that go directly to the livability of our communities. How do you see this playing out uh, during your administration as attorney general? How do we hold law enforcement accountable without undermining the ability of police to keep our streets and neighborhoods safe? Keeping Californians safe will always be the top priority for me and making sure that Californians uh, can uh, live uh, free of, of, of crime and, and, and be safe from crime and violence um, is going to be uh, always a top priority. And, and as, the, as the Department of Justice is, uh, is, uh, has, has a, a very strong law enforcement component, a criminal justice component, as well as a civil component. So we're involved in a lot of spaces and we're going to use the, the tools, resources, and, and um, authority and power and influence that we have to make sure we're doing everything in our power to, to keep Californians safe. And, you know, I, I really believe that uh, law enforcement is an invaluable part of our communities and that the, um, um, the vast majority of law enforcement officers want to build and cultivate and strengthen the trust between communities and law enforcement. That trust isn't always present uh, for uh, many reasons. Uh, uh, that have uh, occurred over time for you know too many uh, for too many reasons in too many places in too many ways um, that trust has um, has has dissipated and so it needs to be rebuilt and you can't have trust without uh, accountability so accountability police accountability is very important having thorough independent investigations of officer involved shootings for example is important um, I think de decertification is very important something that 46 states in this nation have done when a, an act of egregious misconduct has led to an officer being decertified not allowed to um, serve as a law enforcement officer any further um, something that exists in my profession if you get disbarred uh, it, because of an egregious violation um, so uh, you know and and crime right now is is at, at uh, violent crime is at one of the lowest levels in the history of our state. Um, it's about half of what it was in the 90s. But there are spikes in crime that are uh, really important and serious and need to be addressed, and um, including uh, spikes in, in homicide in certain areas, as well as gun violence. So we need to take action that addresses that crime, that eliminates it, and keeps communities safe. Um, and that can look like a, a lot of different things. I, th I think how we police is important. I think there are certainly ways to, to do it better, um, to do it more effectively. Um, for example, how we allocate our resources. Um, you know, law enforcement officers, uh, I think with their qualifications and training, um, can really uh, assist with uh, serious and violent crime. M maybe they don't need to be involved in uh, traffic um, uh, stops as much. Maybe they, they shouldn't be asked any, um, um, as, as widely as they have been to respond to mental health crises and perhaps mental health professionals, those with white coats and, and training um, could, could assist there. Certainly there is possibly for partnership in certain situations where um, they, they could become dangerous. So just reimagining how we, how we police, we're in the middle of a racial justice reckoning right now, as well as a, a reckoning on how we police. And I think um, thinking about how to use um, our, our police and uh, force and law enforcement officers in the way that is most valuable to keeping our community safe and and responding to other issues like homelessness um, and poverty and a mental illness in, in other ways that address those issues best. You know, we always want that the highest best um, uh, uh, use of our of our limited resources and thinking about how how we do that most effectively. I think um, can, can be really important. So we're in the middle of, of some really important conversations where everyone deserves to be at the table um, to address our challenges, to, to think about how we can do this in different ways, in better ways, um, in fairer ways. And you know, uh, for some communities uh, who want to be safe in their communities and neighborhoods, um, you know, they want that, but they also want to be free from uh, being the victim of unjust application of force or violence from a law enforcement officer. And for as many communities, uh, they don't think they can have both. But I, I know we can have both. We, we need to work at it. We, uh, we should be safe in our communities and free from unjust application of force or violence from law enforcement officers. That is uh, imminently doable, something that we need to work towards and work at um, with everyone at the table as we um, 
you know, de determine and imagine how best to uh, do our policing and, and respond to the many challenges we have in our communities, including safety always being top among them. Well, Attorney General Bonta, just on behalf of the entire Bay Area Council, we're grateful for the leadership and we really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. So thank you. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Bay Area Council. I appreciate you. If you ever need anything, please reach out.